As I thought of Founders Day, I, it made me think of beginnings and made me think of the time that Beth and I uh, first came to Westover to report for duty. And I got to the front door and I reached down for the handle and the door was locked. So finally I stepped over that little hedge on the school side and I pressed my face against the window of, uh, of Red Hall, uh, Red Hall. And, and I can tell you that uh, Red Hall looks as glorious from the outside in <clears throat> as from the inside out. And as I looked, I noticed that up on the landing, you know, where the piano comes out, there was a, a, a golden dog sitting, laying there, kind of in a command position, overlooking Red Hall, looking down the corridor to the chapel. And the thought that occurred to me was, that could be a watchdog. <laughs> and the single living thing in the school. <clears throat> I'm constantly amazed at, at what the uh, alumni of Westover are engaged in. So I really think that, that Westover fostered in me a, uh, a sense of community and the understanding that every community that you find yourself in outside of Westover is interlinked. I think Westover is extremely fortunate to have such an extraordinary head in Ann Polina. Yes. Yes. And uh, she has been there for such a long time, and the faculty is, uh, is, is such a dedicated group of individuals. And um, I think that they instilled in the girls this um, sense of wonder and sense of a larger world out there. I have the great good fortune to be head of Westover at this very exciting time of our 100th birthday. And in the years that I've been at Westover, um, I've seen it as much more than a head of school. I started as a teacher, uh, and I saw it in that way. I held many administrative posts, and so I saw the school working in many different ways. Uh, I saw it as head of school, of course, and uh, most importantly, I've seen it as a parent. The students are amazing. They are committed and bright and interested. Uh, they. Uh, care about the world around them. Uh, I believe it is the women of this world who are going to make a difference, a permanent difference, uh, in this next hundred years. Uh, and I think that uh, we are growing here an army of young women um, who believe that the women all over the world are their sisters uh, and that they are going together uh, to make the world a better place. In Nepal, we were taught Nepalese and at home I spoke Tibetan and in school I was taught English. So just like and then we watched um, like Nepal is very has a very Indian culture because it neighbors India. So I watched like Hindi Hindi films and so then I picked up Hindi. What I'm interested in, even though I'm a sophomore, I'm pretty sure I know what I want to do with my life. Just being in Westover, I and being around girls so much, I tend to analyze like just how they act. And like, I just tend to analyze everything because it's just like people really interest me. And so psychology would be really great because I also found that I love helping people. Today and Westover is the leader in educating women and they are providing our girls today with the most fabulous opportunities. So many of the traditions, so many of the special qualities of Westover remain. So an alum can come back to Westover and meet with girls who are here today and they share a lot of the same experiences. I saw them wear all these tunic and I, I was not used to that at all. Uh, we just played in short shorts uh, and so yes, we did uh, change that um, with the girls, okay. And, and we went to more um, progress. <laughs> It's closing, I would say.
Westover is a scholarship student. There's a national program called A Better Chance, and um, part of what they do is to identify students in inner city schools and uh, match them up with private boarding schools. I was lucky enough to be matched up to Westover. So I got on a plane for the first time, got lost in New York City trying to get here, showed up at Westover at about midnight, and the next day I looked around and thought, oh my God, where am I? It was a whole different world. Uh, I came from Cleveland, Ohio on a housing project. So uh, to be here was very, very different for me, opened up a lot of doors, uh, lots of opportunity, and um, really was a starting point for me beginning to see how different things in the world could be. So I've always been indebted to what I've learned here and uh, stay committed because I do believe that there's a lot to offer for a lot of young women who would typically not be considered, would not consider going to a private all-girls boarding school, but I think it's absolutely the best education for a young woman. We are going to find the derivative of, so I want you to find a space on the board and we're going to go through all seven of them. But as we discussed, we're going to stay at the same pace. If you find that somebody that is a partner is not, or not a partner, that is not getting it, you explain why. So let's see how far we can get, and then we're going to go to discovery after we finish these. Before Westover, when I was in middle school, um, math was my absolute least favorite subject. You know, I mean, I was in a class with pretty much all boys, um, and it was so intimidating. And when I got here and learned that four years of math was, you know, recommended, it scared me to death. But really, the first class I got in there, I realized it was different. It was the teaching style. It was the fact that there were no boys. And we learn differently here. And, and I love that so much. And I love math now. If I'm in a class with, you know, all boys again, I, I'm ready because I've been through Westover, you know? I mean, I'm actually making my own documentary on adoption from China. I've been allowed to do my own independent senior project for one year, which has never been done before, and, and they're with me 100% on it. What Westover did was they helped me arrange my schedule so that I could take two languages at the same time. I took French and Latin my sophomore year. They offer trip to the country that you're learning. So last time they went to Italy and France for spring break. I actually hope to take French during college, um, so if I hadn't picked it up at Westover, I definitely wouldn't have had that experience. I thought after um, he saved the maiden, he went back and saw Marlon dead and then mm -hmm. married him. No, no, actually, um, Lionel doesn't die. Because remember, they're finally parted at the end when Boris reluctantly is going to finally, he's like, all right, I'll defend myself. And he pulls it, and he really doesn't want to do it. But then remember, at this sort of somewhat belated point, couldn't you have brought the fire in the clouds to save the nice holy man? Yeah. The nice yeah. Herman who got yeah. slaughtered? And right? And or Colbert yeah. who got slaughtered? Oh, that was so, so sad. sad. That was so sad. He called that again and again. What are you up to anyway? Razumikin suddenly cried out. The painters weren't painting on the day of the murder, and he was there three days before that, wasn't he? What are you asking? Oh, God, next stop. Parfrey clapped himself on the floor. Damn if I know which side is up in this case. He turned to Raskolnikov. Oh, yeah. This time the artisan lifted his eyes and gave Raskolnikov an ominous and somber look. Suddenly he said in a quiet, but clear and distinct voice, murderer. I'm taking AP Photography right now and I really love it. Um, this is my fifth course that I've taken here in photography at Westover. That was a really fun experience to make those that portfolio because instead of using the regular 35 millimeter camera or the digital camera, we actually used view cameras which were used back way when 1940s, 1950s, and you had to carry around this big camera everywhere and adjust everything um, without looking through it because you had to put the curtain over your head and go under and look at it and it was upside down and that was really that was really fun and uh, the negatives were this big about four by five or so and you only had two chances to make the negative and you had to slide it in everything correctly and that was. Um, that bird was a lot, had a lot of meaning to me. Um, it was something that was in my family for a while, and uh, it really, um, it represented a lot to me because I actually was the one holding the bird, 
and my friend just, I set up the picture and she snapped the, the shot for me. My mother um, had a thing for bluebirds. That was one of the things that really meant a lot to me was showing her connection with the bluebird and hope and stuff and holding it. I'm also working on an independent senior project in Westover's woods and on the grounds here. My favorite subjects are art and biology, so I'm kind of combining those interests to make this guide. I think it was after I started taking classes at Westover that I started to realize that art was something that I really wanted to pursue. So we needed a bigger room. And Joe took me on this little walk and uh, he showed me the space I'm in now, which was the old machine shop. I thank you, Joe, for my art room. I do love it and everybody else does too. Uh, the concepts that they're dealing with are line and pattern. About pattern is a deliberate repetition, so you want to have things repeat. This one, even though I tried to get him like in the same kind of fluid dance motion, it didn't quite work out. No, Amy is um, French. <laughs> our French exchange student. You don't like that one? No. Why? I don't know. The, the legs are too short. And... Okay. I like the feeling of that one, though, a lot. Yeah, and I like yeah. the, the way you've got the... Yeah, it looks like rays of light. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something to warm up with. And then I did that. Oh, oh wow. Which I liked. Why do we all sort of say, oh, that's so cool? What is it about it that's cool? What is it about it that you like? I like how... I really like the really white line around it. And then inside class, they're working on a found object sculpture. Well, you we have to think about what the viewer will think that you're trying to represent. I'm going to make the deer sculpture out of the sticks. Then I'm going to um, add bits of trash um, that, that's all torn up. And it's going to kind of signify the grass. What I'm trying to show is how slowly our greenery is turning into litter. I'm gonna make this into a city. So I'm gonna have different, I think, different color cloth behind each of these, which will be buildings. And then here I'm gonna paint um, uh, gold lines. So this will be a, a highway. And I'm going to have, um, I have foil from um, my room from chocolates. And um, I'm gonna have windows. And then I'm gonna have cotton coming out of here, like. Um, smoke. I'm gonna have people and I'm gonna make them out of paper clips. I'm making um, an eye out of the tire. Well, the eye is gonna be made out of sticks and garbage. Those are the babies, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You see? <laughs> My name is Fanny Curtis Luke, and I was the class of. 1941 at Westover. I left Westover and the war was on us pretty much. And I ended up being in the Navy working on airplanes. I was a, a mechanic and worked on the engines. I learned at Westover to do things with other people to have teamwork, so to speak, and that was very helpful later because uh, I needed to know teamwork when I was in the Navy. Did you take a science course in Westover? Is there... No, I no. didn't. We had a very strange science teacher. <laughs> How was she strange? <laughs> what way? Um, well, he was a man. <laughs> that made him strange <laughs> at Westover. Freshman year, you're required to take two electives. I took physical and structural engineering along with intro to computer programming. And then sophomore year, you're given the option of taking AP Computer Science or two more electives. And then junior year, you take two electives. And then senior year, you either do an independent research project or you 
in the spring term they offer a class called the EDP or Engineering Design Project, which I'm going to be part of this year with Jillian. I started WISE as a sophomore, which is not traditional, but um, I never thought about engineering or going into anything to do with math and science before I came to Westover. I learned how to computer program. I'm now working in a forensics class, and um, I'm just discover doing hands-on projects, which always excite me. Where, where are you going to go? Do you know? Um, I'm going to Tufts University School of Engineering. The fall term of my senior year, I took AP English Literature, um, AP Computer Science, AP Statistics, um, Honors Physics, Conrad, and I took an elective that was online called Multivariable Calculus. I think that at Westover, it's a boarding school, so of course you meet people outside your own neighborhood. Um, if you went to a public school, you'd only meet people who live, say, five mi miles or more from you. Like, it wouldn't be... Um, you would meet people from Saudi Arabia or China or Korea or just from all over the world, from Florida even. I never <laughs> would have met any of these people if I hadn't gone to Westover. If people really wanted proteins to be the genetic material, why? We talked about this yesterday. Oh, because they know so much about them. Because they know so much about them and because what do you know about proteins? They're a lot of complex. They're so complex. They're, they have so many amino acids. There's so many. There are a lot of amino acids. There's so many different kinds of proteins. Using a blackboard is so old-fashioned. I'm just totally embarrassed. Okay. <laughs> they should have come and, and shot Heather. All right. Oh, oh, I don't mean that. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they're all the same. But I was right then. You were. Okay. Yes, right. okay. Shelby was right. Julia was wrong. <laughs> was wrong. Okay. So what we've done today is we've investigated three different salts and sugar to see which ones would be the most effective uh, in lowering the freezing point. The biology students have the greenhouse. That's a great, I, I can't say enough about something like that. And if someone had told me in 73 or 74 that at some point I would be teaching school or coming back here, I would have thought, you've, you've gotten me confused with someone else. But. The theater was not something I did before I came to Westover. I was very much a painter and drawer before. I decided to go out for the musical my freshman year, and it was Oliver. And I went for an audition, and the, ca the cast sheet was put up, and I got Oliver. And I been in so many productions now. This is Anne Frank. What I'm in right now is my ninth production at Westover. <laughs> um, I, uh, before Anne Frank, I did. I played a 75-year-old woman who poisoned people, <laughs> and that was wonderful um, in a good way. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without Marla, honestly. I mean, she's given me so many roles, and I, I don't think. In any other school, I would have gotten as much stage experience as I have here at Coast of Fire.
tight and um, we help each other out and because the academics are so hard, um, we're all in it together. We won't leave Westover prepared for the world because we have been shaped into the status quo, the norm. We leave prepared for the world because we can adapt to the people, the problems, the relationships, all of that which, which might come our way. And we can do all of this without, not only without losing ourselves, but continuously discovering more and more about who we are. We've all adapted to basic flying, but if we come away from Westover with anything, I hope it's a desire and ability to continue adapting in less sort of greater heights.